good morning so in this video i am going to discuss about determination of ionic radius by pauling's method it's a very important topic a method which is used for determining ionic radius that is cationic and anionic radius right first uh, let me say what is the definition of ionic radius so ionic radius is the distance between center of the nucleus to the point at which the nucleus exerts its influence on the electron cloud of the ion okay it's a distance between center of the nucleus to the point till which the nucleus can exert its force of attraction over the electron cloud okay right now now you know generally in molecules atoms are in contact with each other through their valence cell isn't it the same thing is observed in case of ionic compound also even in ionic compounds the cation and anion are in contact with each other through their valence cell correct now this is a cation the first one is a cation the next one is anion this is nothing but the valence cell of anion this is valence cell of cation now you can see in this ionic compound the cation and anion are in contact with each other each other through their valence cell isn't it right now from this point till this point is nothing but the radius of cation isn't it similarly from this point to this valence cell is nothing but the radius of anion so that the total distance actually this is nothing but the center point of cation this is the center point of anion now the total distance between center of cation to the center of anion is nothing but d of c plus a minus what we call it as inter nuclear distance or inter ionic distance okay so that now this d is the this d is the summation of this r c plus and r a minus isn't it right now therefore we can write as the sum of radius of cation and radius of anion sum of radius of cation and radius of anion is equal to the intranuclear distance that is d of c plus a minus okay right so let us have that as equation number 1 here r c plus is radius of cation r a minus is radius of anion d c plus a minus is nothing but inter ionic distance okay right generally in atoms or ions the radius is inversely proportional to effective nuclear charge that is greater the effective nuclear charge lesser will be the radius and vice versa okay so if effective nuclear charge of atom or ion is greater the force of attraction between valence electron and nucleus also will be more so that there is a contraction in size the radius decreases that is what the radius is inversely proportional to effective nuclear charge isn't it right now when we apply this to cation and anion you can say radius of cation is inversely proportional to effective nuclear charge of cation okay z star c plus is effective nuclear charge of cation equation number 2 similarly radius of anion also inversely proportional to effective nuclear charge of anion let us have this as equation number 3 whereas uh, uh, instead of z star c plus we can use z effective c plus also okay both are nothing but effective nuclear charges okay right but now so equation number 2 is divided by equation number 3 so that as a result of that i am getting radius of cation divided by radius of anion is equal to z star of anion divided by z star of cation okay so i am going to take this as equation number 4 or the same equation can be written as r of c plus divided by r of a minus equal to z effective of a minus divided by z effective of c plus z star z effective are nothing but same which are nothing but effective nuclear charge okay right now so we have got four equations is it right? now solving equation 1 and 4 first equation and last equation we are, we are able to calculate radius of cation and anion radius of cation and anion provided that is if you are given d of c plus a minus inter ionic distance z effective of cation z effective of anion if these three values are known the radius of cation and radius of anion can be determined okay right in the sense if you know the right side values of equation 
1 and 4 the cation and anion radius can be determined okay so this is what we call it as uh, Pauling's method which is used for determining ionic radii of cation and anion okay right now let us see a problem which is based on Pauling's method okay right so now this is the question calculate radius of sodium ion and radius of fluoride ion that is cationic radius and anionic radius if d of na plus f minus that is intraionic distance is about 231 picometer okay right here what is given is you are given the intraionic distance d of c plus a minus it is about 231 picometer now they are asking radius of na plus ion and radius of f minus ion okay so as we discussed earlier uh, by solving equation 1 and equation 4 isn't it these are the equation 1 and 4 we are able to calculate uh, ionic radius isn't it so that i have written equation general equation 1 and 4 okay right now apply when this equations are applied to the ions r of na plus plus r of f minus r of na plus plus r of f minus is equal to d of na plus f minus in trionic distance that is r of na plus plus r of f minus equal to this d of n a plus f minus is given is nothing but 231 picometer so now let us have this as equation number one which okay right then we have to go for equation number four isn't it right so equation number four la right side la we have effective nuclear charges of anion divided by cation isn't it so that we are supposed to find out effective nuclear charges for both the ions isn't it for that we use a rule what we call it as Slater rule okay so effective nuclear charge can be calculated with the help of what is that rule called Slater's rule that is discussed in the previous uh, topic isn't it so this is the rule which is used for finding uh, effective nuclear charge okay right now uh, first let us calculate the effective nuclear charge of Na plus ion okay so first thing you have to write the complete electronic configuration of Na plus cation 1s2 2s2 2p6 now the orbitals are grouped 1s in a group 2s 2p in a group isn't it now we are going to find out effective nuclear charge for an electron valence electron so leave one electron remaining there are seven electrons isn't it seven electrons which are present in same group then two electrons in the immediate inner group okay right now effective nuclear charge formula z effective equal to z minus s whereas here z is nothing but the atomic number whereas s is nothing but screening constant okay but now this is the formula to calculate uh, effective nuclear charge z effective equal to z minus s okay right now effective nuclear charge of na plus cation atomic number 11 minus we have to calculate screening constant immediate inner cell electron is about 2 into contribution to the screening constant 0 0.85 is it plus number of electrons in the same group 7 contribution of electron in the same group 0 0.35 okay so i am getting about 11 minus 4.5 which is nothing but 6.85 but now this is the effective nuclear charge of na plus cation okay similarly the effective nuclear charge of f minus anion fluorine atomic number is 9 isn't it then Fluorine and N, uh, fluoride ion F minus ion and Na plus ions are isoelectronic so that the electronic configuration of F minus also the same the same thing that is Na plus configuration isn't it therefore screening constant will be same for both Na plus and F minus so that I am going to subtract that S value 4.15 from 9 so I am going to get uh, 4.85 there is an effective nuclear charge of anion that is uh, fluoride ion isn't it right now these two values are substituted in equation number 4 on the right side isn't it okay right now uh, so the equation becomes radius of Na plus cation divided by radius of C F minus anion equal to effective nuclear charge of F minus ion that is nothing but uh, 4.85 what is it 4.85 divided by effective nuclear charge of cation it is nothing but 6.85 so, okay when you divide this you are getting about 0 0.71 now i do the cross multiplication so r n a plus this is equal to product of these two r n a plus and 0 0.71 so that i am getting equation number two r n a plus equal to 0 0.71 into r of f minus okay now 
you are, here you are getting a value of r n a plus is it this can be substituted in equation number one so substitute two in one but now in the place of uh, r n a plus in the place of r n a plus i am going to substitute this value is it plus already r f minus is the that is equal to 231 picometer this one r f minus this is 0.71 r f minus so that summation 1.71 r f minus 1.71 71 rf minus is equal to 231 therefore rf minus equal to right side value divided by 1.71 therefore i am getting 135.1 that is the radius of fluoride anion okay so it can be rounded off as 135 picometer okay right now this is equation number three now we have got the anionic radius isn't it right now when three is substituted in equation number two we get the cationic radius okay but 3 in 2 r na plus is equal to right side on the 0 0.71 into rf minus isn't it rf minus value is 135 i am substituting here so that when you do the product of this 9.95.9 picometer so when i round off i am getting 96.96 picometer okay that is the uh, radius of cation okay radius of na plus cation okay the final answer the radius of sodium ion is about 96 picometer radius of fluoride ion is about 135 picometer okay so this is how to calculate ionic radius using Pauling's method okay I, I hope you understood how to do the problem based on Pauling's method thank you